Peace to the so-called Black Gamer, who are actually the Biblical Israelites. It's your brother St. Michael, here with another Righteous Review. Today I want to talk about why Dragon's Dogma 2 is total trash. Alright, so, why is Dragon's Dogma 2 total trash? Well, there's a few reasons, and let's start with these. The ideas in Dragon's Dogma 2 are stuck in the last generation of game development, and that results in a game that has high points, but ultimately it falls flat on its face because of using the same old tricks in the steel dirty bag. All right, we're going to look at five things today um, to determine whether this game is any good. Our rubric over here at Righteous Gaming is we look at freedom, we look at innovation, we look at fun factor, and we look at engineering, and lastly, we look at story. All right, each of these are with two points, and we remove a quarter point um, for things that your game just does absolutely poorly. We also have a merciful review where we remove an eighth of a point um, for things glaring uh, inconsistencies and errors in the game's um, uh, design and development. So without further ado, let's get into it. So, eh, let's talk about freedom. In Dragon's Dogma, you're free to be the, aris the arisen of your choosing and to customize a male-female uh, character or anything in between. The robust character creator yields immediate gamer investment for Capcom. However, after this, your freedom is severely hampered by what? Linear questline that invites you to seek progression using your own ingenuity but then stops you dead in your tracks when you actually figure out a clever solution. For example, right here, let's look at this note, right? Right here, for example, uh, there's a quest that tax, tasks me with figuring out a way to get into a particular area, right? Before embarking on said quest, I remember that there was an item I encountered that said it could be used to get into this particular area uh, using trickery. So I wore the item. Uh, however, the however the uh, person in that area. Uh, said also that the item can be used to fool others into thinking um, that you were someone that you're not in order to gain access into the area I wanted to gain access to. However, when I showed up with the item that's supposed to work according to the game's own um, messaging, I was vehemently turned back by the god. This would make sense had the game not literally said that I would be able to access that area with the particular item, right? This is the kind of nonsensical design that uh, is all over um, Dragon's Dogma 2, unfortunately, right? To their credit, there's an alternative route to the destination if you, sh if you search hard enough. <laughs> Your freedom is also uh, hampered by a serious lack of uh, engaging traversal options. Your options are to walk, ox cart, fairy stone, or <clears throat> use some kind of sky pulley thing. I don't know the name. Gondola, maybe? Not sure. Um, but those are your options, right? Walking is a thinly veiled overuse of the 30 second game dev principle that says you should give the player something interesting to do every 30 seconds or so. Taking an ox cart is uh, periodically engaging uh, because you get stopped in the middle of your ox cart ride to fight and the fairy stone is fast travel. In a game where traveling is such a big part, a uh, water and air traversal would have helped this game to feel more like an adventure and less like a constant shove in the back toward the next quest icon or ladder or chest 
right? Or um, bush to pick fruits that your point, pawn points out. In addition to this uh, lack of traversal options is the plethora of barriers the game sets up to keep you on its predetermined paths. These include high walls, cliffs, fences, and streams. This feels like a lot, like a lot uh, less of restriction in uh, Batal, um, but it's here in the game nonetheless. And some of the uses are utterly nonsensical. For example, a friend of mine couldn't jump over a fence that was about uh, the you know the height of his head, even though in Dragon's Dogma you can clamber up rocks that are about the same height, right? So these um. Uh, poor design choices uh, hamper the open world free feeling uh, of this game, right? Uh, this is totally unacceptable in a 2024 uh, release. No water traversal, no air traversal, no fun traversal in a game about adventuring. Let's look at innovation. There is minuscule innovation in Dragon's Dogma 2, right? Um, fighting, the climbing the monsters uh, has a new mechanic where you can stand up on the monsters back once you get to a certain height. Um, your that's pretty much it. I want to say your pawns are able to throw you up to the monster this time around, but that was also in Dragon's Dogma 1, so that's not an innovation. Right? We've seen the same um, game essentially built before on a worse engine, right? So, where are the innovations here? in the monsters attacking the town, in uh, the way you climb up the monsters, in some of the new interactions uh, with the monsters, which I won't spoil, right? That's where all the innovation uh, uh, lies, right? And in um, your new vocations and your vocation um, skills right however in the open world sense there's no innovation right there isn't even a copying in dragon's dogma 2 to the standard of other games that do the same thing it makes me wonder if they spend any time at all playing other games other open world adventure games to get a better sense of what they should and should not do, right? We've seen the same pseudo open world done before in games like Monster Hunter Out, Outer Worlds and Dragon's Dogma 1. We've seen the mounting of monsters to defeat them done before in Dragon's Dogma 1 and Monster Hunter and uh, in Dragon's Dogma 2, you know, mounting the monsters though it has a few innovations, is more clumsy than Dragon's Dogma 1 for beginners. But once you get your legs moving around on the monster, it's not intuitive. In fact, I would argue it's less intuitive than it was in Part 1, right? It's unyielding trying to move up and down a monster. You have to jump and hold the grab button um, in order to uh, quickly uh, get around on the monster, I've found right and it doesn't look like you know it was a um purposeful uh, game choice but rather a fluke right but once you get your legs moving um your legs moving around on the monster is not intuitive right nor does the game reliably interpret the moves that you're trying to make right We've seen uh, Court Intrigue, right, which is also in Dragon's Dogma. The strongest point of Dragon's Dogma 2 
done just as well in Dragon Age Inquisition and much better in Vampire, Fallout 4 and The Witcher 3. Luckily, the pawn system, right, which is touted as the biggest innovation Dragon's Dogma 2 has to offer, is great. I like how the devs have found a way to make it very, very interesting to use pawns. I won't spoil the game for you but by giving away the secrets of the pawn system, but they did a great job with it. However, in a game that feels like mindless repetition quickly, for example, I've visited the same cave three times now for two different missions, having already cleared out the cave while there was no active quest. Um, uh, and... my mission is basically now broken right um the npc that i had to rescue from the particular cave is now stuck in the cave i try to pick them up and carry them um, out of the cave but every time i put them down they begin to walk back into the original area that i found them in right so <laughs> The game, as you can hear, is a jumbled mess, right? The uh, pawn system, like I said before, they did a great job with it. Uh, the quest system, however, has many broken points, all right? And so multiplayer in this game would have definitely been a saving grace. A boon right the weapon systems are not innovative either they use the same elemental basis for defeating foes but they make design choices that are not nonsensical one of which is my ability to wield a massive full body sized mace but for no other reason than the game saying so it's horribly ineffective against saurians though it has incredible knockdown power the Saurians just take it like a kiss on the cheek. I'm wondering how a blunt weapon can be ineffective against a monster it dwarfs in size, yet if I throw the same monster, the Saurian, off a ledge, it takes huge damage. That simply doesn't add up, and Dragon's Dogma 2 should have learned from Outward, a game that has a best-in-class uh, uh, combat and progression. They should have learned from Elden Ring, and you should have learned from the Soul series how to create a more meaningful weapon acquisition and upgrade system. Let's move on to the fun factor. Is this game any fun to play? Well, despite its um, shortcomings, there's a little bit of fun to be had with Dragon's Dogma 2. Felling great beasts with ease. Once you get to level 20 or so, it's consistently satisfying as your knowledge of the game's systems and your longer health bar now affords you the opportunity to be dangerous in battle. This, in my opinion, is the only fun part of Dragon's Dogma 2. When I felled a griffin in 5 minutes for the first time, it felt great because I went from being victimized to controlling the fight. Perhaps they should have made Dragon's Dogma 2 a total boss run. Right? Engaging with some of the minor quests in the game is also fun, allowing you to be nefarious in your dealings. Though generally Dragon's Dogma 2 follows the same played out morality policing of yesteryear's white supremacy hero complex RPG, it's good that they have a speck of light or two shining in the darkness in this form. I'm trying so hard to think of other things that are fun in this game and I'm drawing a total blank. That unfortunately means that this game is just not very fun to play. Ruining the fun is the game's offensively simple crafting and cooking mechanics. Regarding cooking, you must eat most of your meat raw. There are only two meat types regardless of what you kill, and you can only cook one item at a camp for an ambiguous boost to your stats. The crafting mechanics are even worse, relegating the materials you find to weapon and armor upgrading, but upgrading can be skipped 
in favor of just purchasing more powerful weapons. I'm going to say that again. The crafting mechanics relegate the materials you find to weapon and armor upgrading. Not crafting, but upgrading. It would have been so much wiser for Dragon's Dogma 2 and more engaging for Dragon's Dogma 2 to have a crafting system that was based on materials gathered. It would give the gathering of materials meaning instead of relegating the material gathering to upgrading, which essentially makes them only suited to gold acquisition since you don't have to upgrade your weapons in this game to be effective. You can just buy a more powerful weapon, right? This is a major missed opportunity. And after having played games like Outward and Ark Survival Evolved, this is totally unacceptable. Let's look at the engineering. Dragon's Dogma 2 is not technically sound. Okay, There are noticeable stutters and frame rate drops when there are too many enemies on screen. You also spend a good amount of time fighting the game as you move uh, around in the world. Right, because of this auto climber mechanic, right, that they introduce in the game and the ability to trip and fall. Right, in theory, this should, you know, reduce uh, the number of button presses with the traversal, right, with the auto climber to get over a simple wall or railing or upper ledge, but in practicality, it ends up leaving you in awkward positions or fighting to traverse the battlefield as your enemies trample you. To their credit, however, at least you never just walk off cliffs. But because of the deliberate and clumsy movement, the or de the deliberately clumsy movement, there's always a chance that moving around uh, the battlefield will net you a game over screen. This is a bad design choice. In addition to this, pawns and other NPCs accost your attention as you walk by, and you are forced to engage with them. Uh, why not have the NPCs all act like the fellow who sells you the really expensive house in Vernworth? The subtlety with which he hinted at needing a task completed actually compelled me to speak with him, and so I found out he had a house for sale. This is a much better game design choice than forcing players' um, hands with over-aggressive NPCs, all right? This is the 21st century. No one wants to be forced to do anything, right? They should have just had the NPCs call out and try to get your attention instead of accosting uh, you as you walk by with there without there being a choice as to whether or not um, you enter that cutscene because that's essentially what happens. The camera is also a chore to manage. It clips into the ground, swings around to the back of the player in awkward and jarring motions that obstruct the fight as well. I dare say the camera in Dragon's Dogma 1 worked a thousand times better than this camera. The battle music loops loop also gets annoying after a while and players who play along will likely opt to turn the music off. As to Capcom's credit though, the lighting, wind, wave and combat sounds have a punchy crunch the character models look good as well um, the subtle minstrel music that plays outdoors or during meetings is well placed when you're adventuring um, and it sounds great a lot more work should have been put into making this game control as smoothly as Giant's Dogma 1 at the very least and it's a shame that this simply wasn't done. Now let's move on to the final portion or the portion before the final portion, the um, story. Though many reviewers don't seem to particularly enjoy the Dragon's Dogma 2 story, I found it to be one of this game's strongest points. After living in a mostly empty world devoid of personality in Dragon's Dogma 1, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a welcome change that integrates you into the world in interesting ways. 
The story is very engaging. <clears throat> and is a nice little mystery that I enjoyed unraveling. To their praise, most negative stereotypes are not reinforced in this game. A feat most welcome and required in um, 2024, right? In conclusion, Dragon's Dogma 2 is an engaging story told in a uh, an engaging story and a great mystery told in a poorly built and optimized world that destroys the sense of adventure by constantly begging you for side fives and to gather the next useless piece of loot. It's a stale gameplay loop that despite its very attractive look is as empty as creator Hide Hideaki Itsuno's promises. So there you have it, family. That's the review for Dragon's Dogma 2. Okay. Um, the Righteous review score is 3.75 out of 10. The Merciful score is 6.875 out of 10. By both standards, well, by the Righteous standard, this game is an utter failure and total trash and not worth your money and by the stand the merciful standard this game is okay at best so skip this game and play no rest for the wicked or small lands right um to have your fun and have it righteously. Peace.